How do you get started on Etsy? I'm sharing everything I had to do to set up shop. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen and this channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable for everyone. We're going to talk a little business today. One of the comments you probably get when you tell people you sew or craft are, those are so cute, you should sell them on Etsy or set up a shop. But how easy is it? So I'm going to walk you through everything I had to do and give you a brief overview on how exactly I set up my Etsy shop. If you're not already familiar, Etsy is one of the largest online marketplaces for handmade goods and supplies. And I've thought about doing it for a while, but I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to sell. Then I finally settled, since I have a sewing and crafts channel, to sell ready to sew kits. I wanted to make sure all the pieces were already cut out to make it easy for you guys so you can get right to the fun part of the sewing because I think one of the least, my least favorite parts of sewing is like doing all the prep work, cutting out all the pieces, fusing all the interfacing, that sort of thing. So all the kits I'm going to be offering in the sewing report Etsy shop are going to be ready for you to just go. So you don't have to do the less fun stuff. You can get right to the part you enjoy. And I also wanted to sell some sewing notions and I have a lot of favorites here that I use all the time, like my Clover Hot Ruler, some scissors I use a lot, mar invisible marking pens. So I wanted to start to offer some of those products that I really love. And I have a relationship with a wonderful woman I met years ago at QuiltCon, Roxana, and she is now a distributor of, of fabrics and also of sewing notions and tools through a company called Checker Distributors and also through Fico Fabrics. So we've developed a relationship over the past few years and I wanted to go through her. She's great and she's really made the process pretty easy for me. So I decided to go that route and I also was thinking up some sewing kits. So last year I launched the drawstring bag kits. I'm also going to be doing a different variation on the kit for 2021 because I, I have some fun ideas for the upcoming holidays. I know we're a little far out. Once I had those ideas and I've already registered as a business being a YouTuber and a video producer. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through everything I've done in the past with the business stuff and we're gonna get a little granular. So if that's what you're interested in, keep on watching. The first thing you really need to do is register as a business. So as a YouTuber, I had registered as like a video consultant media producer with my county. Now this all depends on where you live in every state and every jurisdiction is gonna be different. Obviously, if you don't live in the United States, it's gonna be very different. So I'd highly recommend you research how to start a business in whatever place you live. So where I live, I'm in Florida and I'm in a certain county. So I had to register as a business with my county and pay a yearly fee. And then when I added on the Etsy branch, I decided to also contact them and add on a retail division uh, so basically I'm considered a couple different categories as a video producer and now a retailer. So I kind of have two different branches of this business. It's getting a little complicated and that's why this year I'm working for, with a CPA for the first time. Now getting a license to resell products was a whole different thing. Within the state of Florida, in order to be able to sell things, I had to get something called a sales tax annual resale certificate. And I also have to pay Florida sales and use tax. So what does that all mean? Getting that resale certificate basically means I can go to companies and say, hey, I am a legit reseller and then I can buy products wholesale. To get wholesale accounts with many of these companies, you have to have a certificate like that and also show proof that you're registered as a business. Now I'm doing it as a sole proprietorship. I looked at the different options like doing an LLC or whatnot and lucky for me, my county had some free business workshops. So I would do some research. Your county or your local community may have some free resources as well like that. I found them pretty helpful because they kind of explained what you need to do to operate a business within your county. And also they had some really helpful tips and guides. I also got a free book on business plans. So that was really cool. And I really felt a lot more comfortable with the whole process after going to a couple of those workshops. Now this was pre-COVID. So since then they probably changed things. Maybe they're doing them online. So I had to learn all of that stuff. Now it's obviously different for different types of businesses, but for doing the online re retailer stuff, ew, this was kind of a simpler form of business. So this is something I'm pretty comfortable with. Where I'm located in the state of Florida, I have to pay a yearly like tax to keep my business registered. 
and I also have to do quarterly reports for sales and use tax. So this is different in every state, but within the state of Florida, Etsy does not collect the sales tax for you. Now you can see on their website, they'll tell you which states they collect sales tax for. All these states have enacted legislation which requires Etsy to collect the sales tax and to not put that burden on the individual shop within the Etsy platform. So Florida does not do this. So at this point in time, I have to collect the sales tax myself and I'm also responsible for paying the state at least every quarter. It really depends on how much in sales you get. Whether I get any sales within the state of Florida or not, I have to actually fill out that return and submit it even if I have zero sales. I found this out the hard way and I had to pay a $50 penalty the first time because I did not know that. So good to know. And I'm gonna link to some of these resources below in the description box. Obviously this only applies to Etsy sellers in Florida, but I'm sure every state has something equivalent. So I would look up what you need to do within your state in order to be operating above the law because you definitely wanna do that. I know at first when you're selling stuff, it can be tempting to kind of go under the table. And maybe that might work if you're only selling it to like friends and family and doing cash stuff. But when you start to get into the area where you're selling to people you don't know or you're doing an Etsy shop, you really want to make sure you're taking all these steps because you don't know your state or the government could definitely come after you at some point. So that's why I wanted to make this video to kind of break this all down. And the other thing about Florida is that I have to pay use tax. So that means if I buy fabric wholesale, say I get a bolt of fabric and it costs $100, and I use a yard of that for making samples or for my own personal use, because I did not pay sales tax on the bolt of fabric to begin with, and I'm not reselling that item, I have to pay use tax on whatever portion I use. So if a yard of fabric is $5, I have to pay whatever my sales tax is on that $5 piece of fabric. So that's something that you also have to put on your sales and use tax return. And it's pretty easy to figure out. I found some, some guides to it. And again, I've done so much online research. I've spent so much time looking at videos and finding different blogs and websites to help you out. And I'm really glad I did because I feel a lot more confident that I'm operating above board here. And you certainly wanna do that if you're considering doing an Etsy shop. Within the state of Florida, things get a little complicated with the sales tax. Each county could, and each zip code could have a different sales tax rate. So it's anywhere from like 6% to 8.5%. I believe my county is in the higher bracket. We're at like 8.5%. But lucky for me, I found someone else on Etsy that sold a very easy to use guide to how to input sales tax rates within Etsy. What I have to do on my end is every time someone in the state of Florida buys something from me, I collect the sales tax from it and then I have to pay the state every quarter. So this person made a very cool guide that saved me loads of time that explains how to input the sales tax rate. And there's a spot, and she really explains it well, there's a spot on Etsy where if you're collecting the sales tax yourself, you can input different sales tax rates. So if someone in a certain zip code buys from me in Florida, it will automatically calculate how much sales tax I have to collect from them. And then that is factored into their, their total cost. I get the money and then I have to give it to the state. Now, if you're in one of those states that remits the sales tax for you, you are very lucky because you don't have to do all of that. So Etsy kind of does all the work for you. And I've also noticed certain states, whether I'm within the state or not, they collect sales tax from that resident. So if someone in California buys an item from me, Etsy will collect California sales tax and then remit it to the state of Cali California. So I've noticed quite a few different states do this, but I'm not responsible for the sales tax. At that point, Etsy collects, collects it and then remits it. I just have to do the state of Florida because my state does not require Etsy to collect the sales tax and remit it to the state without me being involved. So again, every location is different. It can be a little a little hard to figure out at first. And the other thing is that if, if I make us over a certain amount of sales in a state, I'm definitely not at that point. It's like $100,000, $300,000. That would, at that point, consider me to have economic nexus within that state and I would probably have to pay t additional taxes as well. But that's kind of if you're like big time Etsy, I would definitely look up resources or talk to a CPA if, you're, if you have questions or if you're a little confused because this can get pretty complicated. 
and I've already talked to a CPA in my area and that's why I feel pretty comfortable with what I'm doing, but you wanna make sure that wherever you are, you're doing things by the book. Another thing I'm responsible for submitting this year is called a tangible personal property return. And what that means is the state of Florida requires me to inventory everything I own for my business. So I did this last year because I was doing the video, producing stuff. I had to note every camera I had, every lens, all of the equipment I used for business purposes, and it gives you a $25,000 exemption. So if you have under $25,000 worth of stuff, you are exempt and waived from doing it the next year. So if you have under that amount, you really only have to do it once. I'm going to have to do it twice just because I also added on this new retail section of the business. So I'm going to need to submit it again with all of my video equipment. And also now all of the inventory I have for the Etsy shop, all of the equipment, and add that up. I still believe I'm gonna be under the $25,000 threshold, so I should hopefully only have to do that once. And then if you get to the point where you have over $25,000 worth of stuff, that includes office equipment, any property you have, you're going to need to do that every year. And yes, you probably are gonna to wanna to get an accountant to help you with that. I'm in a few different Facebook groups for small business owners, particularly a lot of Etsy sellers. And there's a pretty hot debate over the best place to sell handmade items or other types of products like that. Some people really like to build out their own website, like do Shopify or WooCommerce. And there's a lot of debate over which platform is better and what's the best place to sell. And I think it's gonna be different for everyone or should you choose Etsy? Now in my situation, I looked at Shopify and WooCommerce and I felt like they would take longer to get off the ground. I would also really need to hire some help to build out this section of my website sewingreport.com, I, I use uh, WordPress, and it was pretty easy for me to build the main site, but I think to do the shopping portion, I felt like that was a little out of my skill set. So I would, at that point, I would need to pay someone to help me build out that portion of the website. I kind of weighed over doing that or doing Etsy. And the reason I decided to choose Etsy is because I felt like it, it would be faster. I didn't have to build that portion myself. I also do like that Etsy has a lot of different people on it. If I was doing it just on sewingreport.com, there would certainly overall be less traffic. And the other thing about Shopify and WooCommerce are even though it's your own platform, there are still monthly fees associated with keeping that going. And it, you can definitely research all of those platforms and decide which one is right for you. Etsy, I figured the Etsy fees versus like the Shopify and WooCommerce monthly fees you know, they were kind of a wash, but, and I decided to do Etsy because I thought it would be, for me, the easiest. And so far, I've been pretty happy on the platform. I think if my sales volume gets to another level, I may rethink that. But for now, I think it works just fine. In my situation, I'm not really relying on Etsy for the marketing because I'm lucky enough to already have a pretty decent social media following. I have been driving the majority of the traffic to my Etsy shop myself. So if you don't have a social media presence yet, Etsy actually may be helpful to you to help drive more marketing, especially if you buy their ads or do a lot of SEO stuff, like if someone's searching for a certain type of handmade good. In my situation, I am driving most of the traffic and I knew from the get-go, I wasn't gonna be relying on Etsy, the platform, to drive my sales. And I really appreciate everyone here at The Sewing Report that has purchased from me or bought a kit, I really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to offering more quality things that I really like and that helps you guys out as sewists and crafters. Once you have all of the groundwork laid, like registering your business, deciding what to sell, working on all the sales tech stuff, then it comes time to actually build out the Etsy shop. Now this took me a few days. You have to get all your listing photos. I made some listing videos and decide on all the verbiage for all of the descriptions. I took quite a bit of time with this. And I also have found that if you are going to take all the time to do all the photos for marketing purposes, work on the description, it makes sense to have quite a few of that item. Like if you only have one specific thing and then it's sold out and then you have to do new listings for individual products, you're gonna spend a lot more time doing that. So I've kind of found that it makes sense if you're gonna be selling something, you wanna be able to keep renewing that listing and having more in stock so you don't have to keep taking new photos all the time or you know, coming up with new product descriptions. 
This took me several days. It's not something I would say, unless you have like one thing, it's gonna take you some time to get everything set up, take all the pictures, work out all your shipping options. I do really like that Etsy has so many different options for setting up the shop and doing customization. And I don't personally find the fees to be that bad. The only thing I have been opting out of is the off-site ads. I kind of found this out the hard way. When Etsy runs sales or like promotions on external websites, like on Facebook or random websites, they charge you 15% of the total sale if your item sells from one of their ads. And that was a little high for me. So I have decided to opt out of the off-site ads, especially because I'm driving the marketing myself. I don't want Etsy to take 15% of the sale just because they helped me get a sale from running an ad on Facebook. Shipping, to make things kind of easy for myself, I set up my own shop to do like a three to five day processing time. And then I'm only offering like kind of standard first class package United States Postal Service shipping. I also decided to only offer shipping within the United States so that I don't have to worry about like the international customs stuff. Sorry guys, if you're outside the United States, but for now as a very small Etsy seller, I kind of just can't do all of that external risk, you know, if something gets lost or whatever. So I'm for now only doing the United States and offering kind of the standard shipping. To give myself some time, I wasn't sure what my sales volume would be and I didn't want it to get overwhelming. And I would rather exceed expectations than have a customer be disappointed. So even though my processing time says three to five days, I really try to get out my packages the next day in the mail. And we gotta talk shipping. I would highly recommend the Pirate Ship service. It's free, it's really easy to use. You can integrate the Etsy stuff into it. So it really makes things very simple and, I, and they offer discounted rates. So far, one of the cheapest and most convenient options for shipping supplies has been Amazon. I will link to everything I've been buying below in the description box. Cool bubble mailers, lots of like resealable clear bags to put some of my products in. I also got some really fun sewing report stickers from Moo.com and I've been using that to add to all of the packaging just as kind of a branding thing and, and some fun stuff. I also bought some freebies, so I kind of put those into some orders just to say thank you to customers just some things like pens, zipper pouches, little things like that, just to say thank you. And I've also bought, they're on the way, I got some thank you, like little cards that I can put in each order. So the packaging on Etsy does seem to make a difference. I've ordered from Etsy a lot from other sellers, and I find a lot of these people really put a lot of work and time into doing cute packaging, and I really appreciate it. I think it's cool, and that's something that you don't really get if you're ordering from like a corporation. At the very beginning, I was printing out all the pirate ship labels just on regular computer paper. And then I was like cutting out the labels and then affixing them to all the envelopes with clear packing tape. Now this was fairly time consuming. And after I had one weekend where I got like 16 orders in one day, I decided to splurge on getting a Rolo thermal label printer. And that purchase has been so time saving. So if you get to the point where you're making enough sales and you can afford to invest in a printer like that, I would say go for it. It's been great. It's really easy to use and you never have to buy toner or printer ink because it's a thermal printer. So I got the uh, Rolo printer and then I got some labels for it and you can even do one label at a time. So my order volume has been like one order every couple days or so. So that's a pretty good pace for me. It's really easy for me to keep up and I can just slide one label in, it prints out and I don't have to keep like a stack of them by the printer. So that has been really helpful and it will definitely save you a lot of time. Now, as far as the like proceeds from the sales after the fees and everything, I've been using all of the revenue from the Etsy shop to buy more inventory. So at this point, financially, it's the store is kind of breaking even and I wasn't really going into this with the intention of making tons of money off it. I wanted to be able to offer, you know, if I'm recommending something in a video, sometimes there are some factors that are out of my control and if I recommend stuff, it's hard for people to find. Like that's why I don't usually recommend fabrics is because it's they're hard to get and I don't want people to be frustrated like that. But because now I have an Etsy shop, 
if I'm recommending something in a video, I can make sure that you guys can actually get it. So that's why I've been stocking stuff that I've been using in videos. So with having the Etsy shop, this is something I have some control over. And I can also let you guys know if something's out of stock and also I can reorder some things. So I really like being a part of Checker Distributors. You should definitely follow them on Instagram and they offer a lot of different brands. So I'm able to get lots of the popular brand name stuff you guys like, like the Magic Pins, like the Clover products, and they have a lot of new items. I can get a lot of different types of fabric through Checker and also through my affiliation with Figo Fabrics. Now I can get all the fun new fabrics from there. So I really look forward to seeing where this Etsy shop can go and grow it this year and be able to offer some quality things that are helpful to you guys. And I also want to talk about like the more about the accounting side and the business bank accounts. This year I did set up separate checking, savings, and credit cards just for the Etsy portion just to keep that separate from my personal finances. I went through a the Grow Financial Credit Union. They were very helpful and it was pretty easy. I did have to go and actually set up the account in person, but from there it's been pretty, they've been pretty easy to work with and I have online access. I can do all kinds of stuff with that. And I just really wanted to make sure that I could kind of track the business uh, profit and loss separately and not get that as mixed up into my personal finances. And the other good thing about working with a CPA this year is that he's been really helpful in kind of telling me like what kind of things I can write off as business expenses and really try to take advantage of all the tax credits out there and just different sort of tax rules. So that has been really cool. And I also just got a QuickBooks subscription. So I'm doing like the simple start plan. It's usually $25 per month. And with a, a discount, like I think I get it for $12.50 for the first couple months. Now I was kind of intimidated by QuickBooks at first. I am sort of a math nerd. I love accounting numbers and I do like a budget online. So I'm pretty comfortable with math numbers. And I also have been doing our taxes for the past few years. But I was like, how do you use QuickBooks? So I did a little research and I found a really great series done by a channel called, her. she calls herself Small Business Sarah. And she did a whole series on how to set up your Etsy stuff on QuickBooks. Super helpful. I will link her playlist because I have watched all the videos and she's been super helpful in my getting QuickBooks up to speed. She tells you how to reconcile the accounts. And Etsy, unfortunately, it doesn't really like integrate completely into QuickBooks. So it's not like you can just plug and play and then QuickBooks gets all of the stuff. A Small Business Sarah has a lot of great tutorials on how you can pretty easily integrate the Etsy business stuff into the QuickBooks stuff. So I highly recommend that series. It's been super helpful. And I've been able to, I learned QuickBooks in a day. So it was, that series was so helpful and she has a lot of very Etsy specific videos. So that is what's all been involved in setting up an Etsy shop. And the next time someone is like, hey, you should start an Etsy shop. It's, it's not something you can just, just get up and do. Like it takes a little bit of planning. You have to do a lot of like registering with your business, county, state stuff. So it's not something you can just go out and do. So, and I don't think a lot of people who don't so understand that. So I wanted to do a video kind of breaking down everything I went through. I really hope this is helpful. Let me know if you are an Etsy seller or if you are thinking about starting up an Etsy business this year. What's been your experience with Etsy and you know, why, why are you interested? And again, I'm not an Etsy expert or any sort of accountant. So if you do have questions that are really specific, I would say, consult a CPA or an accountant or someone who does Etsy bookkeeping. I'm just sharing what I went through, but I'm probably not in a position to give advice at this point. I, I'm just kind of new to Etsy, so I thought I would share what I've learned so far. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're very new to sewing, you can check out some of my videos on learning to sew, and those are aimed at true beginners. I'm Jennifer with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video.